Hi, this is Jun Nakajima from Intel. Today, I'm presenting how we can include IO devices in into a trust uh, execution environment. The first generation of a virtualization-based uh, trusted execution environment, TEE, VMs, virtual machine, such as Intel's uh, TDX uh, guest, uh, trusted domain extension guest, do not include devices or accelerators into um, trust boundary of TVMs. So the devices are not allowed to read or write the TVM confidential memory. Because of that, because of uh, that limitations, the current techniques used for the TVMs incur significant uh, performance overhead, especially for high-performance I.O. So this is our agenda. I'll start with uh, existing I.O. virtualization technologies and implementations for VMs. Then I'll explain the limitation of the current I.O. virtualization when used for their TVMs, especially with the I.O. virtualization. I'll summarize TDISP, TE Device Interface Security Protocol, and then I'll summarize the TDISP architecture and then requirements. Also uh, introduce the Intel TDX architecture in support of a TEIO as Intel's implementation that helps allow direct assignment and an establishment of a trust between a TD, TD is a trust domain, and then TDI uh, device interface hosted by TDISP compatible device. Then we'll talk about the software changes required for Intel TDX in support of a TEIO. I'll show some uh, high-level software flows for basic uh, operation, and then show uh, software touch points or new functionality to enable uh, Intel TDX uh, in support of a TIO, showing uh, a conceptual structure of a VMM with uh, Intel TDX support. So let's revisit the current I.O. virtualization technologies. There are two types of uh, I.O. virtualization technologies today. First one is software-based I.O. virtualization. Those include uh, virtual devices or synthetic devices such as Vert.io. With software-based I.O. virtualization, the VMM exposes uh, a vir uh, virtual device, such as a network interface controller NIC, to a VM. And software device model in the VMM or the host OS emulate the behavior of the virtual device. The device model translates the virtual device command to physical device commands before forwarding the uh, request to the physical device. And modern processors or platform provide features to reduce virtualization overhead that may be utilized by the VMM to allow VM to use a direct uh, access to hardware I.O. devices. Especially if Intel, for example, supports uh, the following uh, hardware-assisted I.O. virtualization schemes for direct data movement without needing uh, software assist assistance. For example, direct device assignment or SRIV or scalable IRV, scalable I.O. virtualization. Here, I would like to define device interface. It's uh, the unit of a 
assignment for IO virtualization capable device. Now, let's take a look at the direct access to hardware IO devices in VM. We need a hardware support, for example, MMIO to access device interfaces such as uh, the registers. We also need a DMA remapping capability or the IO MMU support. Also, for the device uh, interrupt isolation, we need uh, interrupt uh, remapping feature. The point I would like to make here is the VMM needs to be trusted because it set up a hardware for the above, the, the feature above, for protection and isolation for both a host, both the host and the guest. And for TVM, trusted VM, devices also need to be trusted. Now, take a look at the TVM and then IO virtualization. Here, I'll talk about how the base trusted ex execution VM environment. Especially in this presentation, I'll focus on uh, uh, virtual, v uh, virtual machine, such as a TDX guest. As I said uh, at the beginning, the first generations of uh, TVM, such as Intel TDX guest, don't include the physical devices in and accelerators such as FPGA into the trust computing base of the TVMs. Devices are not allowed to read or write uh, the TVM confidential memory. Because of the limitations, today the VMM exposes a synthetic device interface to TVM for IO virtualization. The synthetic device interface is defined to be virtualization friendly to enable efficient virtualization compared to the overhead of associated with uh, IO emulation or soft emulation. But this, however, uh, requires the TVM to stage the data that needs to be sent out, copy copy in, copy out from uh, devices in shared memory, which is designed to hold contents accessible to the VMM and, and the hypervisor. Further protect the confidentiality and the integrity of the such data, the TVM is, is expected to use a cryptographic protection on the IO data. For some synthetic uh, I.O. devices like a network storage, TVM may employ software-based cryptographic techniques for data protection. For example, the networking, the TVM may use uh, TLS, transport layer security, or some uh, mechanism to protect the data sent to the NIC. But this cryptographic protection actually disables the TVM to offload the computation directly to the GPU or FPGA because they need to consume the data. So if it's uh, encrypted, they cannot consume the data for computation. So the question is, if we can trust the GPU or FPGA accelerators, can we uh, can the TVM use then to offload the computation? So this is the case. The keys for the encryption decryption can be shared with a trusted device and the TVM. For example, we can use uh, MKTME on the uh, Intel platforms. However, the issue is the problem is, if the data link is out of a TCB, then 
for example, the because of the switches uh, in between, the T TVM still needs to use a shell memory combined with a cryptographic uh, data protection. So as we saw, the following are requirements for TIO. We need a uh, some trust and trusted entity outside the TBM because the TBM is not included by the uh, TBM's uh, TCB today for TBM trusted VM, and we also need have a mechanism to trust the devices or trusted devices that would require device attestation. Uh, we discussed this one, we presented this uh, device attestation yesterday, actually. And then we need uh, additional hardware support. For example, we need to make sure the PCIe data links are secure. And also we need a uh, protection or access control for the DMA mapping and MMIO. And more importantly, we need a standards because uh, devices are platform independent. So trusted devices need to be used for vendor agnostic ways. And I believe uh, the answer to that is uh, TDISP. T device interface security protocol, which I uh, introduce uh, next. TDISP or TDISP. Uh, TDISP defines an architecture for trusted IO virtualization, um, which includes uh, establishing a trust relationship between a TVM and TEIO device. TEIO device interface called TDI is a unit of uh, assignment for IO virtualization capable device. For example, a TDI may be an uh, entire physical device or SRV virtual function. And Second thing is the securing the data path PCI interconnect between the host and the device. Transfers must be encrypt, uh, cryptographically protected to avoid or uh, to provide confidentiality, integrity, and then replay protection to TVM data. Such schemes uh, must also be guard against the violation of a producer consumer uh, ordering and then support tds uh, assignment and uh, removal of life cycle in trusted manner and then more details are defined in uh, the spec here and then TDS be based upon the foundation provided by the CMA SPDM. The SPDM, PCI SPDM is a security protocol and data model specification. It's about the standard messaging, data object, sequences for performing messages, message exchanges between devices. The device ex uh, exchanges include authentication and provisioning uh, hardware identities, measurement for firmware identities, session key exchange protocol to enable confidentiality with integrity uh, protected uh, data communication and other related capabilities. The 
CMA means uh, component measurement and authentication. It's basically uh, defines uh, additional optional security feature. And this is uh, uh, used for the software session. I'll talk about that later. The other one is IDE, integrity and uh, data protection. IDE provides uh, confidentiality integrity and a replay protection for uh, TLS, uh, sorry, TLP, the transaction layer packet, which is also PCI, uh, defined by PCI. It's a low-level uh, hardware, you know, layer. And then this provides the implementation uh, for the Securing the data pass, the the interconnect. Right, I just uh, mentioned the the previous uh, slide. This is a TDS architecture overview. As you see, there's a hardware interconnect, the PCI fabric here, and the color coding, the this light blue is a TCB of TVM accepting the device. And this color is a TCB of all TVMs. And then the yellow stuff here, yellow or orange uh, uh, boxes are not uh, uh, TVM, TCB. And then uh, this is a key element in this architecture, which is a TSM, T Security Manager. This is uh, this runs on the host. The other thing is uh, that this is a per device. Uh, it's called the DSM device security manager, they are a logical entity. And then TSM is, I'll talk about more details of the, the functionality of TSM or the DSM later. And then TSM and DSM build trust relationship using SPDM, TD, ISP. And then obviously this is a TVM. Then we see the two TVMs here. And they have access to the TVM, a T TDI. This is a T device interface. This is a, again the unit of a device assignment. And as you see, they have a state also, TDI can be assigned to legacy VM. And in that case, the, it doesn't have the TDSP state. It's just, just to act like a legacy device. I'll explain the TA here. And before explaining the TA, uh, the standard uh, uh, added uh, definition of TBIT. TBIT is defined in uh, ID prefix. It essentially allows the uh, originator of uh, TLP to indicate a TLP is associated with a TVM. And a TA in the picture uh, it's a translation agent. It's it's a permitted to use a TBIT, and that provides access control to TVM as assigned memory and then a memory mapped I/O registers, like a trusted MMIO or DMA, and then also identified the request originated by TDI in a run state, 
Land state is one of the uh, TDI st state, and then whenever the TDI is ready, uh, ready for use, use uh, it it should be in a run state. Okay. Next, I'll talk about the more details of the TSM, the functionality of TSM. So first, it provides interface to the VMM to assign memory, CPU, and then TDI resources to TVM. Also, uh, it implements a security mechanism to the access control. For example, uh, MIO, MMM translation table, or MMIO. They are still a bit uh, vague. I'll explain this uh, with more uh, using uh, implementation at this point. And then also, uh, like I uh, mentioned, the TDI has a TDS state and then TSM use uh, TD TDS protocol to manage the uh, security state of uh, TDIs. And then also that it used to establish the ID encryption keys for the host. Now next I'll talk about the uh, DSM's uh, functionality. Again, the DSM is a power physical device. This is a device. This one, this, this uh, box is, the, and then you have uh, the DSM power device. This is used for uh, function as authentication of a device identity and then also reports a measurement of the device. This is a device level, not the TDI level. Okay. And using for the SPDM session, uh, then uh, once the key is there, then uh, it configures the IDE encryption key in the device. And then uh, it manages the TDIs, such as the configuration or locking the TDI configuration, also report the TDI configuration, and also attach or detach TDI from the TVMs, um, so forth. Now next, I'll talk about the Intel's uh, TDX for TIO. So this is a uh, architecture overview. Notice this. Uh, this is a TIO device. Uh, in this picture, this uh, you know in the previous picture the T device was at the bottom, and uh, this has been moved to the right hand side. But in terms of architecture, logically this is consistent with uh, the T display architecture. We, we, that I just showed. And the number one, this one uh, is a T device. Okay. In this picture, that this device has a one physical function and a legacy virtual function, and it has two uh, TDI, uh, the interface, uh, trusted device interface, or two, and then the DSM. And then the PCI ID port. Okay. And this in a Intel TDX with a TIO support, this functions as the, this means that the Intel TDX module and then the TPM, TPA is the TDX provisioning agent, 
functions as a TSM. Okay, and then uh, number two is IDE, uh, we just saw uh, in the TDIFS architecture. And three, the hardware has a trusted uh, MMIO and DMA mapping support, and also have a PCI ID root port support. And then num number four is the combination of a uh, Intel TDX module and, and TPA. TPA is a so-called architectural TD. TD is a, a trusted domain. It's a guest, a trusted guest or TBM in a TDX implementation. And between the TBM and then TDI, the trusted MMIO and then the DMA remapping is, are provided in this picture. Like I said, uh, this is uh, not uh, this is a software session between the DSP and TSM, and this is a hardware session. This is a par device, and then this is also a par device session. Okay. The next, I'll talk about changes required for the Intel TDX uh, in support of a TIO. Before I show the changes required uh, to enable TDX, uh, I'd like to show the high-level software flow for basic operation, including initializing how the how we initialize the host machine for TDX support. That's a call, I call step A. So let's take a look at uh, the, some details. So if a TDX module is not loaded, then the host VMM needs to load the TDX module and completes the initialization and then uh, checking the the presence of a uh, TIO support. Then uh, it configures the trusted uh, IOMMU and then the PCI Express root port. Then launch the TPA TD. Uh, look, uh, look at how we start SPDM session with the device for the secure communication. First, uh, the VMM checks the device capability required for TIO device. I, I don't talk about the, uh, the details, but uh, it's about, for example, PCI, DOE capabilities. I'll, I'll cover that the DOE later. Then it creates SPDM metadata for the TDX module, okay. And it it uh, invokes the TPA to start SPDM session with a physical device, injecting the interrupt, basically trigger the TPA uh, action and PPA uses a uh, SPDM to collect the device certificate and a measurement and then return to the VMM for device attestation later. And TPA passes the SPDM session keys to the Intel TDX module.
and then TPA returns the device certificates and the measurement to the VMM. Okay, the step C is set up the ID stream for link encryption. First, the VMM creates an ID stream by calling the Intel TDX module. And it queries, uh, configures the device ID extended capabilities. And then it programs the keys for all ID substream with the both the receive and then transmit direction. And then uh, it starts all ID substream with both uh, receive and then transmit direction. Now we have a SPDM session and the ID session, they are secure now. Now, what can VMM do when handling uh, TDIS messages? TDIS messages are integrally protected, essentially it's uh, encrypted, and the keys are maintained by TDX module. So, but uh, the VMM communicates with the device, DSM, and then actually send, receives the actual TDS per messages. So it needs to call the TDX module to prepare, I mean, create and then protect a required TDS message. And then the TDX module returns a secure the payload so that the BMM can actually send or receive the message. Now talk about uh, the step D, which is uh, start the TDI. Okay. Now talk about step D, which is uh, start the TDI. So the first step is uh, the BMM creates a data structure for the device interface and then the configure TDI. Then the BMM calls the TDX module to move that TDI state to the locked state by generating a TDS per message. Then the BMM creates a TD and BMM assign a TDI to TVM. Now TD gets the device certificate and a measurement from the BMM. Then TD verify the device based on the TD specific policy. Once the verification passes, then the TD can accept the TDI to the TDX module. Then the TD uses a TDSP uh, protocol to send a TDSP message, get an uh, interface report from the DSM, and TD accept. If it's uh, okay, then TD accept the uh, MMIO and then uh, DMA remapping uh, reported in the report by the function provided by the TDX module. Then TD requests the TDX module and then the VMM to move the TDI into TDISP run state. And then uh, finally, it, it um, set up accept uh, MMI1 and DMA to pin. Now, 
Now, we are talking about the software touchpoint for enabling uh, Intel TDX in support of TD TIO. Our goal is uh, to take advantage of a TDX architecture and implementation uh, as much as possible. We, we want to define the common layer across uh, the, the different implementation from uh, different vendors and then define a vendor specific operation including uh, Intel TDX. So this picture shows uh, our conceptual s structure when we support TDISP and then the Intel TDX support. The color coding, the orange means that the subsystem required for TDISP support. Like I said, TDISP builds upon SPDM and an IDE. And SPDM uh, requires a PCI DOE, uh, Data Object Exchange. Essentially, it uh, uses a PCI config space. Okay. And then yellow boxes are generic uh, TDSP uh, support subsystem here. And then uh, light blue uh, shows uh, Intel TDX uh, specific uh, uh, subsystem or functionality. As you notice, uh, there are a couple of places. One is around TDX for IDE, uh, SPDM, and also the IOMMU, and then also in, also the, in the guest side TDX support. Okay. So let's take a look at uh, more details. So, so one is associated with uh, PCIO IO, uh, PCI virtual IO subsystem. To expose a TDI to TD, uh, we need to identify TIO capability of the device, and then once uh, it's uh, identified, then we may need to do additional initialization that are required by the TDSP before we assign the t uh, to the disk, uh, to the guest. Okay. And then TDSP sub, uh, specific uh, subsystem. This will be responsible for TDI state management. Also request uh, SPDM ID session support. And then uh, bind TDI to the target TBM. Also for Intel specific uh, operation, uh, for example, uh, it calls a TDX module to prepare a uh, required TDS message, like I mentioned uh, above, right before. Third one, this is uh, around the trusted uh, MMIO or DMS support. Trusted MMIO is managed by the secure EPT. We can use the uh, same uh, page uh, paging structures for both secure EPT and then IOMMU um, IO uh, page table. Okay, and the last one is uh, TBM or TD changes. For example, enumeration of a TDI attestation, also acceptance. And then also extension to the kernel API to support uh, MMIO or DMA, essentially accept the MMIO or DMA reported by device report, device interface report. 
We have a white paper published uh, probably uh, during uh, this week and that should be available in the website where TD, TDX uh, specifications are uh, placed. With that, uh, I'd like to uh, uh, finish that my presentation. Thank you for your time. Here, uh, 